Hello, and welcome to another third grade episode of Math Matters. My name is Ms. Matthews, and today we are going to be learning about how to collect and organize data in bar graphs. Let's get started today with a counting warm up. Today, we're going to count by fives. I'll help you get started, and then you can keep counting as you see the numbers appear. We'll stop when we get to 50. And don't forget, we'll continue by counting backwards too. You'll see the numbers flash to help you keep track of where we are. Are you ready? Let's go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. Great job. Now let's go backwards. Ready? 50, 45, 40, 35. Awesome job. You really know how to count by fives. What patterns do you notice when you look at the numbers that we counted? Take a moment to record them on your paper. Let's share some of the patterns that appear when we count by fives. As we read the chart we created from left to right, you probably noticed each number on the right is five more than the number on the left in that same row. Looking down the left-hand column, you may have noticed the number five appears and repeats in each number. Similarly, the zeros repeat in the numbers going down the right column. You may have also noticed as you follow the numbers down the right hand column that they increase by 10. This counting probably sounds familiar to you. 10, 20, 30, 40. You've counted by 10 many times before. But did you notice that the numbers on the left also go up or increase by 10? 5 plus 10 equals 15. 15 plus 10 equals 25, and so on. Noticing patterns can help us count by fives and continue the counting pattern as the numbers get bigger. In today's lesson, we are going to learn more about the process of data collection and how we can use bar graphs as a way to organize and make sense of the data we collect to answer the questions that we are wondering. As you participate in today's lesson, Think about how counting by fives can make it easier to understand data. We will have an opportunity for you to reflect on your learning at the end of the lesson. We'll continue to work on our portrait of a graduate skills today as we record our data in bar graphs and use our writing to keep track of our thinking and share our ideas with others. Remember, you may have questions or make mistakes as you are learning new things today, and that's okay. You may find it helpful to write down any questions that you might have while you are participating in today's lesson so that you can continue your learning with someone at home or when you talk again with your teacher. We are goal-directed and resilient learners, which means we don't give up and we keep on trying. For today's lesson, it may be helpful to have some paper and a pencil or some crayons on hand so you can record your thinking and keep track of the data that we share. Plain paper will work great, and if you have lined paper or graph paper at home, you can use that too. We will pause now to give you time to gather your materials. You may hear some words today that are new to you, so as we work together, listen for these words and try to make connections between these new words and what we are learning. The first word is table. It's a chart organizing the data collected. 
A bar graph is a graph that uses bars to represent information collected. A row goes across from left to right, and a column goes up and down. Math is everywhere, and I'd like to share with you this picture of what it looks like at our house while we stay safe at home. What are you noticing? What connections can you make to this picture? And what do you wonder when you look at this picture? Maybe you noticed the blue bin, or maybe you noticed the cardboard sitting behind the box. Did you notice the recycling symbol on the side? Are you wondering how much trash is in there? Or maybe what's inside that bag? Are there more boxes or cans? If you are like us, spending a lot of time at home means there is a lot of trash. We do our best to recycle what we can so we can do our part to take care of our environment. And it is important for us to try to reduce some of the trash that we throw out. One way to stay mindful of this is to look at how much we are throwing away. So we started wondering, what's in our recycling? Once we identify our question, you know what we need to do next, right? That's right, we need to collect data. So with our gloves on, we sorted through our recycling. What did you notice about how we sorted? Did you notice cans and glasses were separated into two different piles? Plastic containers were grouped together and there was a lot of paper and mail that went into one pile together. Once we've sorted our data, we can begin counting. We can keep track of how many we count using tally marks or by recording numbers in a table. Once we have counted all of our data, it can be helpful to display the numbers in a bar graph to make it easier to look for patterns and compare groups. A bar graph uses bars to represent the count of objects in each category or group. We'll use the numbers we counted when we sorted the recycling to help us build this bar graph. If you have paper and something to write with, you can follow along as we make this together. We will be using graph paper that has lines already drawn on it to help us organize our work. If you have some at home, that's great. And if you only have plain paper, you can make that work too. Let's get started. First, we'll start by labeling the categories or groups at the bottom of our graph. When making a bar graph, it is important to leave spaces between each of the labels to keep the categories separated. We'll also add a title for these groups so that when someone else is reading our graph, they will know what these groups are about. These are the recycled items. So that is what we will put as the title for these groups. Next, we will color a bar for each category to show how many recycled items we counted for that group. To help us count, we'll add numbers to the left side of our bar graph. We'll put a label to tell us what these numbers stand for. Let's title it number of items. Take a moment to write those numbers on your graph now. Don't forget to start with zero on the bottom line. Now we can color in nine boxes or fill in a bar that goes up to the number nine for paper. Next, let's color in the bar to represent the number of plastic recycling items. Using the data from the table, where do you think we should draw the bar on our graph? That's right, we'll draw a bar that goes up to the number six. Now you try to do the next two groups. 
glass, and cans. Don't forget to leave a space between each bar. How did you do? Well, there were seven glass items, so the bar should go up to the seven. Cans also had seven items, so it will also go up to the seven. Now that we have all of the data represented by bars on our graph, there's one more thing we need to remember to do. We need a title for our graph to communicate to others what our graph is about. What title would you give this graph? If you have been recording on your own paper, go ahead and write it down. Tell us what title you gave to the graph. Here's what we decided to use. What's in our recycling? It's okay if it's different from your title, as long as you are sure that your title gives others enough information so they know what your graph is about. Now that our data is organized in this bar graph, we can answer specific questions about what we notice. I'll read a statement about the recycling, and you use the data in the graph to tell whether it is a true or false statement. More plastic was recycled than paper. What do you think, true or false? You're right, this statement is false. What did you see in the graph to help you know that this was false? Right again, when you look at the bars for paper and plastic and compare them, plastic is lower than paper with only six items compared to paper's nine items. Let's try another one. The least amount of recycling came from plastic items. Is this true or false? Yep. This statement is true. Use the information in the graph to tell us how you know this is true. That's right. The lowest bar is the one that belongs to the plastic items. That means the least number of items collected were plastic. The last statement is the same number of glass items were recycled as can items. Is this true or false? Yes, this statement is true. Prove how you know this by using data in the bar graph to explain your thinking. You are correct. The bars for both glass and cans are equal in height. Both show seven items were collected in each category, so this statement was true. Here's a challenge. Can you tell how many total pieces of recycled items were collected? Take a moment to find your answer. If you added up the total number of items collected from each category, you found that 29 items were recycled in total. Let's practice what we've learned about representing data in bar graphs by zooming in on this new graph. Take a moment to take a closer look at this graph and write down what you notice and what you might be wondering about this graph based on what you can see so far. Let's talk about the bars. Did you notice that they are different colors? Maybe you wondered if the different colors mean something special. Maybe you noticed that some of the bars are taller and some are shorter. Did you notice the numbers on the left of the graph? Maybe you noticed that they are a pattern. 
the numbers count by fives so that we can fit more data and count to a higher number in a smaller space. Were you wondering what those bars represent? If you have a prediction or an idea of what they might stand for, go ahead and say it now. If we zoom in some more, we see there is now new information on our graph. How does this change your thinking? What new wonderings do you have? You probably noticed that the bars on the graph are now labeled, well, almost all of them, with types of movies. And the numbers on the left represent the number of students. Do you have a prediction about what the last type of movie might be? It looks like there are a lot of students that picked that category. Also, are you wondering what the title of this graph might be? What might be the question this data is answering? Here are the final missing pieces to this graph. Were your predictions right about the final category? Now we know that last category of movie is comedy. We can also see now that the graph is about favorite movies by reading the title of the graph. By zooming in on the graph in small pieces at a time, we were really able to spend more time making sense of each part separately before answering any questions about the graph. And now we're ready. I'll read the tasks in the grid and then give you a few moments to pick one or two that you can try using the data shown here in the graph. What statements can you make about comedies? What statements can you make about action movies? What statements can you make comparing action movies and musicals? What statements can you make comparing comedies and musicals? You learned a lot about how to collect data and display it in bar graphs in today's episode of Math Matters. First, you selected a question to be answered, and then you collected and organized the data. Finally, you learned how to create a bar graph to show your data and to help answer questions. How did you do today working towards our learning goals? Reflect on your progress by selecting which emoji best matches how you're feeling about today's lesson. A smiley emoji if you got it and are feeling good. A thinking emoji if you think you understand but need more practice. And a confused emoji if you feel you have more questions or could use some help with today's lesson. As you think about the learning goals for today, maybe there is something new you learned that you don't want to forget. Or maybe there is something we talked about today that you still have some questions about. Take a minute to record your reflections on today's lessons and save them for the next time you are able to check in with your teacher. Mathematicians are skilled communicators who are goal-directed and resilient. During our lesson today, you worked on writing to record and communicate your ideas through graphing. You also persevered or kept on trying as you learned new mathematical ideas, even if it was hard. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Math Matters for third grade. My name is Ms. Matthews, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow as we continue to learn about data and graphing. Have a mathematical day! and keep on counting.